First up on the list, we got a Mercury four stroke, 3.5 horsepower. First thing we're gonna do is change the oil. Bruh. And I dropped the dang freaking drain bolt. All right, we're gonna pop the spark plug out and make sure we got good compression. Single cylinder, we're looking for over 100 PSI here. Hundred and ten. 110 PSI is really good for this outboard and that's great news because I actually bought all of these motors completely on a whim and did not compression test them before I got them. So this one will not have any issues running. So let's see if we got any spark. Okay, this motor actually has really good spark, uh, good compression. Put a little bit of clean gas in here and uh, this thing might fire right up. Alright, overall this little Mercury motor kicks butt, fired right up, runs great. The only issue is it does not have forward gear. It's in neutral, so the prop should spin freely. It is. When you put it into forward, we should not be able to spin the prop freely. And as you can see, we still can. So forward gear is out. Let's figure out why. First things first, let's go ahead and pop out this little uh, rubber casing so we can get a good look at the shift rod linkage. We are in neutral, let's try forward. Huh? Nothing's disconnected, it's shifting great. So that's perfect, we don't have anything wrong with our shifting at all, so that really only leaves one more option on a motor like this, and that is that we have a broken shear pin inside of here. And yep, there it is. This is your shear pin right here. It's supposed to extend out both sides like uh, the letter T, a quarter inch on each side. This has been completely broken off. That's great news, all this motor needs is like a $3 shear pin and then we'll be up and running. Got a new shear pin uh, for this Mercury here and we're just gonna pop this in and put our prop back on. Neutral, forward, look at that. This motor's good to go. The only thing left we're gonna do is just a regular service, new spark plug, and new gear oil. Next on the list, we got an Evinrude 6 horsepower 2 stroke. Let's see what we got. This actually might be the cleanest 6 horse 2 stroke I've ever owned. I swear to you guys, I picked all of these up um, just the past week from random marketplace people. This one and the other four stroke I bought from some guy. Got them for a great price, 200 bucks each. And uh, I mean, I might just be getting real lucky here, but let's see if it's got compression. All right, we got good compression on the top, right about 75, 76. Let's go ahead and hope the bottom cylinder is really close to that number. Look at that, same exact, 75, 76. The compression here is in a great range and they are perfectly even with each other, so let's see if we got spark. Uh-oh. Well, no spark top cylinder. 
Let's check the bottom. Looks like uh, we do not have a spark on either cylinder here. Oh, would you look at that? Handy Manny had some garage pops again and put in an aftermarket kill switch. Now let's try. Perfect spark on the bottom cylinder. We got great spark, great compression again. I mean, this is honestly super lucky guys. So uh, permitting that the carburetor doesn't have any blockages, this thing should run fine. Let's see. This outboard fired up really quickly. Uh, it ran overall okay. Um, the only issue is I have to pump the primer bulb to keep it running, so either a bad fuel pump or something between the tank and the line is, you know, leaking air or something. This, uh, this hose and hose clamp is pretty loose, so I'm gonna put a new clamp on here and see if that fixes our issue. Okay, so I just fired it up again, and what I've noticed is that elevating the fuel tank off the ground definitely seems to uh, help the situation and it'll uh, idle fine and run all on its own. I'm gonna put a new fuel pump on there and see if that helps our issue. Um, if that doesn't help our issue, then I'll do a deep dive into the carburetor and the fuel lines and uh, go from there. All right, we're gonna get a new fuel pump on this little six horsepower here in three, two. The fuel pump is in, but we have a new issue presenting itself. When I'm squeezing the primer bulb here, uh, there is gas leaking out of the bottom of the carburetor, so we're gonna have to pop this air box off and look a little deeper into that. All right, we tightened down a couple hose clamps, put some new clamps on, and uh, let's see what we got. All right, this motor runs perfect. Uh, just needs a normal service and a good bath and she'll be ready to go. Next up is this extremely dirty 9.9 .9 Evinrude two-stroke. Filthy on the outside, pulled this thing out of a barn. Let's see what the inside looks like. And <laughs> this is actually, this thing is clean. Wow, this thing looks good. Y'all know the drill by now, compression and spark. Let's see it. We got about in between 75 and 100. All right, 85 PSI on the bottom too. Perfectly even. We got a good motor. So when I'm squeezing the primer bulb, I hear a lot of air in the fuel lines. So we got a leak somewhere and I'm looking around and you can see right under the fuel pump, you can see it dripping out. So uh, I'm gonna pop this fuel pump off and see what's going on in there. There is some cracking in the diaphragm and a little crack on the housing as well. After years of fixing these outboard motors, um, there's been a lot of parts that have gone bad. Um, I never throw old parts away exactly for situations like this. Uh, sometimes you can take three fuel pumps and uh, steal parts from each other and put together a good working one. So we're gonna try and do that right now. After stealing some parts from three different fuel pumps, we officially have a complete fuel pump made of good parts. And this is roughly 99% OEM, um, just one aftermarket diaphragm and spring. If you're ever rebuilding these uh, old Johnson Evinrude fuel pumps, a uh, quick little check you can do to make sure you did it right. Blow in the inside. Hear a little horn noise. And uh, when you blow out the out, you'll get nothing. So. We can know we got a good fuel pump now and uh, now we can pop this back on. The primer bulb is completely firm and we have no more leaks coming from the fuel pump. All right, let's see how this thing runs.
All this thing uh, needed was a little fuel pump ingenuity and it ran perfect. I mean, it idled on its own. Uh, tuned in the lean rich adjustment, idling perfect, ran great. All this thing needs is our standard uh, spark plug, lower unit gear oil service, and a good bath and uh, it'll be ready to sell. Just finished cleaning her up, giving her a good detail. This motor is officially as clean as they come. And we are down to our very last motor that we need to fix and get out of here. This is a Mercury 25 horse. Uh, why does it say 99 you may ask? Well, a lot of lakes, especially around here, have a 10 horsepower limit. And, you know, 10 horsepower is sometimes not always the most fun or fast horsepower to have on your boat. So, some people like to stretch the law a little bit and put 9.9 stickers on a bigger horsepower motor. Now, most of the time, people put these 9.9 stickers on a 15 horse. Um, Putting 9.9 stickers on a 25 horsepower motor is a little ridiculous. Um, not sure how you wouldn't get caught doing that, but to each their own, you know, uh, you may get away with it. FBI, open up! Uh, yeah, guys, after a quick lesson um, from the authorities, uh, this is super duper illegal. Don't ever, ever do this. You will 100% get caught don't do it ever they'll catch you with that being said it might uh, be a little bit illegal to have this out on the lake but it's not illegal for me to work on it and sell it to someone like this so uh, let's go ahead and check spark and compression got about 95 to 100 psi all right perfectly even right about 100 psi we are four for four perfect spark and perfect compression this might be the luckiest run of four outboards i've ever had so let's see how she runs all right before we fire this thing up let's just pop this fuel filter off and uh empty this old gas out and check if there's anything weird going on in there definitely got some particles in there but the filter definitely has been doing its job so that's really good let's empty it out and give this thing a go all right the primer bulb's firm Fuel filter is full and I do not see any leaks anywhere, which is great. So I bought this motor for 400 bucks. Uh, it came with a control box here, all the cables and everything, but what it doesn't have is the, uh, the key ignition. So I unfortunately don't have a kill switch on this thing. So my kill switch plan is to just pull the gas out and let it choke itself out when I need to turn it off, I guess. This thing runs super freaking good. I mean, pumps great water. Definitely the first thing I'm gonna wanna do is get a key start ignition for this. Then we will connect the shift and throttle cables to where they need to be. So that way we have total full control over the motor, can make sure the gears work, all that good stuff. Let's get an ignition put on this thing. All right, this motor needs two things in order to run properly. Uh, we had to buy some new battery cables because uh, the seller I bought it from took the battery cables. And of course, we needed a new key and ignition. So let's get those battery cables on, this ignition wired up, and we will be ready to go. All right, guys, I've got my new key switch uh, wired up to my control box. Yes, I'm aware that uh, this is not a permanent means of joining the two together, 
but it's always a good idea to use a non-permanent wiring solution just while you test it and figure out, make sure it's working okay. So right now I just got some wire nuts holding them together. If everything checks out here, then I'll go ahead and uh, use a heat gun and put some shrink wrap on these wires and get them a, a good permanent seal. But for now, let's just check that we've done everything right. First things first, we should hear the click of the electronic choke when I push in on the key. There it is. That works, let's see if she'll turn over. All right, perfect. And here is the finished setup. Our key completely wired up, all the wires taped together just to keep them there. Battery cables installed on the motor. Everything's ready. Just gonna put this through one more run test now that we have the ability to uh, kill the motor if we have to, so let's see. I just got this last motor all cleaned and packaged up. I've already uh, forced you guys to watch me wash and clean three motors. I won't do it to you again. She's all clean and ready to go. This thing's fully serviced and ready to sell. That's four motors done out of four. Cue the influencer music and profit breakdown. Let's get it. <laughs>